Well, I hope you are having a great Canada Day as this is coming out on Canada Day. It is very warm outside and it's beautiful out and it's probably hot wherever you are watching this right now. And uh, I want to see you at church. We have a few things coming up the next few weeks. I encourage you to just mark this down. The big day camps that we have running for three weeks uh, over the church. Uh, we just want to pr praise the Lord uh, for so many young people who are volunteering and helping and leading these camps. And uh, every week uh, we have a new camp for three weeks in a row. So remember to pray for those kids and youth, really, uh, that are leading it. So pray for the kids, number one, that are coming to the camp, and pray for the youth that are leading the camp or some of the young adults. And it can be very, very meaningful. It's not something we want to put to the side and just say, does this matter? It really does matter. I've seen kids at church in the last few months uh, at different events that came, that, that they started coming to the, to not to the event that they came to, they came to the event because they'd come to the kids' uh, summer programs. So it is not something you just wanna forget. You wanna be praying this summer. And I'm looking forward to what the Lord is gonna do for those kids and for the leaders that are helping with them all. And uh, if you gotta make some adjustments to uh, pray, uh, you know, you can always pray. You don't, you know, sometimes people are like, well, I gotta make an adjustment to my schedule to make time to do something. Well, you don't ever have to really make must, much of a muster, much of an adjustment to uh, pray. You can always fit time in to pray. If you can't help in the camp, you can pray. As I am speaking today, there are deer flies out here. Now, I think I'm okay where I am. You just don't, but I see one buzzing around and I am gonna be freaking out if these things start coming at me. Tis the season and it ain't to be jolly, I'll tell you that right now. Oh, deer flies, unbelievable. If you see me jump, you know what's going on. All these things drive me nuts. I just don't like those few weeks while they're, while they're active. They are not friendly. They need to take a friendliness course, deer flies. They have, all, they don't have your back. They bite your back. These guys are a piece of work. So if I jumpy, you know what's going on. It's just deer flies I can see buzzing around. Well, on Can this is Canada Day when we're talking, and over the next few weeks, as the camps and the kids' camps are going on, look forward to seeing you at church. There's a lot of different things. Uh, we support Canada. We want to pray for our country, and this is a time our country needs a lot of prayer. Seems like all countries need a lot of prayer. Uh, and it's a burden that many of us have praying for the nation and praying for each other. But I know that the Lord wants you to be blessed on this Canada Day. We looked at the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and looking at that, how does God move? Joel 2.12 2, and Jeremiah 29.10 give us little insights. We can see pictures in the Old Testament of what the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is promised to look like when it comes to the New Testament. Jeremiah 29, 10 says, when you look and see there's a restoration, I promise I'm gonna bring you back based on a scripture. This is the scripture. Daniel sees this scripture when he's reading his Bible. He's like, it's time to get the people out. But this is the little caveat, Jeremiah 29, 10, when it talks about I'm gonna fully restore you to the land, it says, when you seek him with all your heart. Now, Joel 2, 12 says, I'm gonna pour out the new wine, the oil, and the new grain, which is the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit power, and the promises of God. Those are the three things that it always symbolizes in the Old Testament. And it says, I'm gonna do this when it, when it gives the caveat. When you seek with all your heart, then I'll do it. So when we wanna see God move, not just in a time of refreshing, but start to what the Bible calls restore. We often pray, well, God heal our land or God restore our Canada or God do this or that or the other thing. This is not really what our word for restore, when you read in the Bible, it's not really giving you an image today, our word, for when, when you read what these promises are, there's a fulfilling of something that God's going to restore like crazy blessings. And there's, it really lacks the impact, our word restore, when we think restore, we're like, we're gonna restore the kitchen cupboards and we're gonna restore the front door. And it means usually you're gonna sand it down and we're gonna just take a little sanding and take a little deck time and we're gonna stain it. 
that's what we think of as restoring, restoring an old house. Now, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but I'm not sure that really gives us the image of what is in the capacity of God to do for us. How do we see God move? The fulfillment of promises that God has for our country, for our nation, for our families, for a person. How do you do it? It's when you seek him with all your heart. It's a funny thing. You would never really say, like you say, I got to restore a piece of furniture. Something's broke. I need to restore it. You kind of think I need to fix it. Fix it to what standard is a way of putting it. The Bible gives you promises of what God will do for his people. When you put your foot in the door, it doesn't mean you're in the house. It means you're in the door. You got to go in to get into the house. So a promise is like a door. So God makes a promise, which is like, it spells it out in the Bible. I'm going to do this thing for you. You can get in the door, but not be enjoying the house. And there's, you know, you, you often say, you know, don't leave the door open. A mouse might get in or a squirrel or something. So you can have the door, just a foot hold in the door, but not be in the house. When you restore, the way to get into what God has for you is through the heart. And this is the thing that's important to say. When times of refreshing happen, like a time, uh, I'll pour out a time of refreshing. It's good. It's part of what God's plan is. But then there's this second part, which is restoration. That's getting in the door to something. The fulfillment of a whole series of promises and that's dependent on seeking God with all your heart. I think that you can have a time where you're refreshed like it's a hot day outside you go for a swim that's refreshing or a drink or a cold drink or a nice uh, ice cold pop or whatever it's very refreshing but restoring something is very different in the biblical context. I think we often think uh, Zechariah 9, 12. We don't think of this verse very much. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare that I will store double to you. So there's times where God does a good, like we can do a good job of restoring a piece of furniture, but God will do something for you when you turn your heart to him. And there's even promises where it will, he'll restore it double. He'll pay back at other places, it says, the years that the locusts have eaten. Restoration in the Bible, and this makes no sense to us, is outpouring. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is restoration. And here's three things. It always builds up or is up building. It is never tearing down. It is always building up. It comes out in our words. When the Holy Spirit fills you, it comes out through gifts of the Holy Spirit. It comes out in our talk. It comes out in how we treat each other. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are set in that mantelpiece within the church. They have to be upbuilding. And the ministry gifts are only for building up the body of the saints, meaning the five-fold ministry. It's a strange thing. You never think of what does God want to restore. One of the things you see is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit only by nature builds up. It literally can't and doesn't tear down. And it does that through gifts of the Holy Spirit, through people, through talking, through our tongue, through the ministry gifts. It's like a hand with fingers. Behind each finger is a hand that kind of controls it. Now, we won't know that God is the head and he tells the fingers in the hand what to do. But it's interesting that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is behind all these different things. Gifts of the Holy Spirit, ministry gifts, leadership. You can want to go along along with something and say, well, that looks like a good, like you can kind of catch a, catch a wave sometimes or you can go along with something. You don't know if you totally believe it, but hey, it's a good ride. Restoration, you can't catch something that you get to go along with it. You have to choose it. Now, this is the one thing I want to say. I think with refreshing, you can kind of go along with it whether you're really all the way in or not. Now, what do I, why am I saying this? Because of what this verse says. To get the full restoration that God promises, you have to do it with all your heart. Our way of putting it is, well, I'm just going along for the ride. Going along for the ride is not going in all the way with your heart. Jesus had a lot of disciples that turned away 
when he gave a very tough teaching at different points in his ministry. Some people weren't, they were in for the ride, but they were not in for the long haul. If you want to go to the place where you're getting not just along for the ride, but you're getting restoration, you actually can't see this level of promises happen without determining and doing it in your heart. It will do something to you when you do that. You do your part, God does his part. It's not a small thing. You have to, you can't say, well, I'm going to just catch the wave and go along. I just want the benefits. You can't, to get the benefits to this, you have to be fully in, in your heart, enveloped in who he is and what he has for you. You have to seek him with all your heart. This is what these verses say. So you're not just standing on your own, kind of getting things from God restored. To get the full measure of what God has for your life, this Canada Day, you gotta seek him with all your heart. You don't have to do what other people tell you to do. You don't have to do exactly as I say. You have to do what he says and let him do between you and him what he wants to do. To let him develop this in you, you have to do something in your heart. What is it? Seek him. You don't have to be perfect. This is very, it's not about a performance. It's not like, well, I'm the most religious guy. That's being an actor, which Paul says is a hypocrite. It's not putting on an act. It's seeking him with your heart to what? To have him change who you are through Jesus Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory. So, I can be very determined in my human nature. That's not going to get us there. I, to swing the door open, to get in the house here, the old, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Jesus is the doorkeeper here. He's the doorway to this life. So you just have to seek him with all your heart. And I think this lands us at the last kind of few thoughts I want to say. What are you looking for? Now, on Canada, you could be looking for good fireworks, and people will drive a long way to do that. A barbecue. You could be looking for a lot of different things. What, what is it you like to do on Canada? Barbecue, uh, steaks, picnic, beach, swim. I'm not sure. I know what I like to do. I don't know what you like to do. What is it you're looking for, though, with God? If you're seeking him with all your heart, really what you're looking for here is him. It's not something you want, it's him. If you seek me with all your heart, then I will bring these blessings into your midst. And the outpouring brings the restoration. You don't want to be critical of people. How do you kill God from moving in your life? Number one, Thing the Bible says is the way you talk. If you don't control your tongue, it will defeat you before you know what's happened. Now, there's a lot of things God can do, but that's the thing we have to put together in our mind. The Bible actually says the tongue is such a dangerous thing, it can either, it can light huge fires. A ship is steered by a tiny rudder. Your life often is determined by your heart, out of the overflow of the heart the most speaks. A transformed heart will not limit your speech. It will set it free. Things that you say will be a confession of what's in your heart. It's great to know good teaching and doctrine, but God isn't necessarily, he's, he, he doesn't want bad anything, teaching or doctrine. You'll, you'll, you'll go nowhere. You'll get deceived. But really, I know people that know almost the whole Bible and they don't know Jesus, which is shocking if you're in university or a professor, knows almost more than 10 guys like me put together, but he's not a born again person at all. So you can, what are you looking for? Are you looking for knowledge? Are you looking for relationships? But really you gotta, you know, are you looking to hammer other people with your, uh, to get them to do what you want? All those things put aside. What you're looking for to have success with God is just to seek him with all your heart and you will find him. 
we often want to defend like what we want or we, what I'm going to take here or what is it that God's going to give me. You want to be fully restored in this moment, in this day, in this time. It's not something just for the future. You can say yes to seeking him in these times today. Very important to do this. What are the requirements to get results? What are, sorry, what requirements do you have to do to get results? You just have to give them your heart. And there, the deer fly is here. He's, he's, he's after me right now. He's telling me I'm going too long now. So I'm just gonna say this, it's like the fingers on a hand. The hand is the outpouring, the fingers are the points of contact. Oh my goodness. Oh, did I get him? I did. Don't let the enemy <laughs> land on your head. Oh, that's so gross. I'm never gonna hear the end of this. Oh dear. God, I'm not gonna let the enemy do any damage to me like that deer fly. I, I think that thing is still alive somehow. Anyways. <laughs> God has something good for you. And that is not what it, what it is. You know, the enemy, the Bible says, and as I close, I'll just say this. The devil throws fiery darts at your mind. It's not in your mind that you're going to defeat the devil. It's in your heart. It's very important to say. You won't defeat him, per se, in your mind. Out of the overflow of your heart, heart come the issues of life yes you can be structured yes you can be thoughtful yes you can be intelligent yes it's good to read books yes it'll take you a long way but what god's looking for to kick into motion the enemy he comes at the fiery darts in your head the bible says put on the helmet of hope which is salvation put on the full armor of god so that those things that land on your mind won't won't go anywhere when your heart is on fire for God, it doesn't matter what hits you in the head, so to speak. My heart will dictate my life. My heart goes to God if I seek him with all my heart. Doesn't matter what the enemy does, my heart belongs to him. Then my, ha I, my life is in his hand and he can knock down anything that the enemy sends. I pray you have a blessed Canada Day what are you looking for with God to serve him and seek him with all your heart? Lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your paths. He knows where he's going and he can take you there. In Jesus' name I pray, let him take your heart. Amen.